there are two forces acting in any flow of water. That there is the force of gravity which flows from the source down to the sea and there's the force of levity which flows from the sea back up to the source again. And the trout responds and is able to manipulate the forces of gravity and the forces of levity in order to maintain its station in flowing water. The extraordinary thing is that when a trout is startled from its lair or where it's reposing, then it accelerates upstream with extraordinary velocity using the force of levity to move itself upstream. Victor Schauberger found himself in a very high alpine virgin forest which he frequented so often and in which he found the most extraordinary events. He came across them. It was though he was almost ordained to be there at the right time in order to perceive them. He came across this fast flowing upland stream in which there was a trout, one of these stationary trout, just with a very slight flick of its tail was standing in this rushing water and apart from its station there uh, which of course asked, made him ask the questions of how it was able to stand there and so on he knew that about a kilometer downstream there was a waterfall a very high waterfall where the falling water atomized into mist and so how was it possible he asked himself that this trout managed to get to this spot because they always come back to their spawning grounds to breed again and from these sort of insights he evolved the idea of this interaction of two energies of this gravitational movement from the source to the sea and from the sea back up to the source again and the trout uses the levitational force in order to surmount these waterfalls and it circles down at the bottom of the waterfall until it finds this upward vortex and then throws itself into the vortex which then sucks it up and eventually ends up on the up, upstream end of it. Victor Schauberger decided to test this out. Victor had asked some of his foresters to boil up a cauldron of about 100 litres of water, about 150 metres upstream. And on his signal, they poured the water into the stream. And as soon as the water hit the stream, 150 metres up from where the fish was, the fish started to, to flail its tail as hard as it could and went backwards. Something had been cut in the water. The energy, which was the levitational force, had been destroyed by heat. Levitational force is the, the bioenergetic force, the biomagnetic force. It is the life force. And Victor observed these moss tips. The moss tips pointed up against the stream, against the current. But when the water was heated up through deforestation, then the moss tips pointed downstream, although because the water had heated, it was less dense than it was before. So he regarded these tips of the moss as being an indicator, indicating the health or disease of a, of a, of a stream. There is also another process by which the trout enables itself to stay in the fast flowing water and that is through the difference between the speed of the water as it flows past the trout's body and trout's breathing itself. According to Victor Schauberger, every particle of water is associated with a particular velocity and a particular temperature and if the temperature relative to that velocity is exceeded then turbulence automatically occurs. So in the terms of the trout, it's sitting with its body in the center, the coldest core water of the stream. And as the water filaments approach the body, they get squeezed aside by the body and in the process accelerate. And as they accelerate, they exceed their specific velocity relative to temperature and turbulence occurs on the rear flank of the trout, which acts so it actually propels the trout upstream the trout breathes in, or at least it takes in water through its lungs, extracts the oxygen from the water, or the large part of it, which then that water passes out through the, through the gills in a semi-oxygen deficient state. And as a result of its lack of oxygen, it absorbs oxygen 
from the surrounding water and expands. And this expansion is also pushed on the back of the trout, which squeezes it forward like a, like a bar of soap. And when it wants to accelerate, it flaps its gills very fast, and that creates more turbulence. And also, because there is a greater expulsion of oxygen deficient water, that means there's a greater expansion of water behind it, which pushes the trout forward upstream.